the Diamond Sutra. Meditation is witnessing. In the past few weeks I have been speaking on various aspects of meditation. Meditation begins when mind is separated from the being. What is this being? You can take the example of a coconut, young coconut. When it is young, its white jelly, jelly remains attached to the inner skin of the shell. It cannot be separated. It is forming. It requires a certain amount of maturity before it could separate from the inner layer of the coconut. When it becomes mature, it becomes separate from the inner layer. You can remove the jelly very easily without breaking it from the layer. Something like this happens. Mind is the layer through which the light or the beam operates. When the light falls in the dark caves of the mind, Various things become visible. Whatsoever is there in your subconscious, the unused part of your day-to-day -day operation. I had time and again given the example. You have gone to a party, a dinner where all the dishes are displayed on a buffet table, as soon as you look at the table, you say, wow, so much of food and nice dishes. Greed comes in. There is a certain capacity of each individual and, but the greed has no capacity, no limits to it. Normally, when you take the food, there are, if there are 10 dishes, you take one ounce of each food, it becomes 10 ounces. Then you have to add the water, and it requires a certain amount of space for the food to be processed easily. If you fill the bottle to the brim, then you will not be able to mix it well. It needs a space for the processing to take place. Normally, an individual can eat between one pound that is 454 grams to 600 or maybe those who eat big eaters, they may need more. And there is no harm in going for a second serve if you need. But no, we take the plate full. All that food that you take, most of the time is not consumed by you. Can that food be placed back? 
in the restaurants when you go. Whatsoever is served to you, whether it is salad or anything, even if you have not touched it, it cannot be reused. It is disposed of in the garbage. In the same way, when the light falls and the mind begins to enter it through its various instruments, what are the instruments of the mind to interact in the outer world? Mind operates through organs of perception. The most important organs of perception is listening and seeing. If these two are corrected, everything else can be corrected. So with these, it goes in the outer world of objects and beings, interacts, brings the information, certain residue information which is not processed or not understood remains unutilized and it goes into the subconscious and unconscious layers of your being. It remains there. It goes on accumulating on a day-to-day -day basis. If you do not know the process of cleaning those layers and then when the circumstance and situation comes, even when it is not needed, we say things which are not called for at that moment. This is coming from the subconscious layers and being is the light, the awareness. In the process of witnessing, the being and the mind become separate. When you look at the light, there is one thing certain that you are not light, but you are the one who is looking at the light. So too, if you are watching a flower, you are not the flower, but a looker of the flower. Therefore, watching becomes a key factor in meditation. Watch your mind. Watch all that is happening. You would have seen cows. They go on eating the food, swallowing, and they uh, thereafter they sit down and bring a certain portion of the food from the stomach, you can see it coming and they continue to chew that food afterwards. You are sitting down like a television screen, a scene comes onto the surface, a name projects, Along with that many emotions, moments, pleasant and unpleasant surface. These are like horses. You have gone in your place where horses are tied and they are ready to let loose. The moment you let loose the horse, they run away, but you also take the right with them. When a particular scene comes onto your screen, let's say my name surfaces. With that, there may be many moments that you may like to remember, and there may be moments which you would not like to remember surface and like a chain 
you go into wilderness, wilderness of thoughts. And that's where the problem comes in. You are supposed to watch as the thoughts appear on the screen. Suppose you are watching a television screen. A particular scene comes where the lead actor says something to the lead actress and you are connected through this event in your own life. You forget the scene, you have gone into your own state and you forget that you are supposed to be doing the watching. When you are watching, there is a particular art of bird watching, ornithology. The birds are coming, they come according to their own plans, they come from far and wide. When you are doing the word watch, watching, you are supposed to see how the birds are in flight, enjoy that, the colors, the sequence, the way they fly, they come in a rhythm, they stay there for a few moments and then they fly back. This is witnessing. You are supposed to watch how thoughts flow, emotions arise. This is all you have to do. No repetition. No chanting of any mantra, no scriptural injunctions, you just watch all that is happening in the mind. There is a process. Do not disturb the process. Do not stop the mind from doing anything. And as you go on watching, Watching whatsoever is happening in the mind, slowly and slowly you will notice thoughts begin to disappear. But you do not fall asleep. Instead you become more and more aware. It is as if you woke up from a deep slumber or a dream state. Witnessing is happening more and more. When a mind attains total emptiness, your entire energy becomes a flame of awakening. It is the outcome of meditation. It can certainly be said that meditation is another name for witnessing. Whenever witnessing evolves, whenever witnessing evolves, all judgment dissolves. In the moment of witnessing, you cannot be judgment. Whenever any thoughts or emotion create obstruction, just through witnessing, you can come out of the quagmire of those emotional disturbances. If you are using a certain mantra and continuing to chant, is not witnessing. Buddha was the first to explain meditation as witnessing. The first to explain meditation as witnessing. Just go on watching 
and you are watching alone empties the mind of its content and then something begins to happen. A process of transformation sets in and then witnessing or meditation leads to transformation. Quite often it happens that aspirants experience a strong resistance against meditation. It is not an impediment. It implies you are alert and awake. You are certain that something is going to happen which will change your whole life Generally, the people are afraid to be reborn. You are too much engrossed in the old pattern because your old pattern, your past, has been your investment. Through witnessing or meditation, your old habits, old patterns, old lifestyle is cleansed. It makes you more alert. And when you are alert, you are alive and you are full of energy. Remember those who are afraid of meditation, certainly they are afraid of life and of awareness as well. The fear becomes, the fear comes because meditation certainly transforms you. And then you enter into a realm which is unknown. The journey of the meditation is from known to unknown, from form to formless. You have known me as a form. You can recognize me because you know the voice, you know the face, and through the listening and through seeing. You can recognize, yes, this is the person that I know. But if your eyes are closed, if you are not hearing, then you will not be able to recognize because you have not established a connection with the energy field. Meditation connects you to the energy field of the Master. In Sufi terminology this is called Tawajjo. The flow of the energy field through the words. The nature of this meditation is such that I have to use the words to communicate the energy field to you. Use the words in a musical sequence so that the sound and silence comes to you so that the energy field comes to you in the form of sound and the silence between two notes and that keeps you in a state of meditativeness it calms down certain things in you, it relaxes you 
and in that very state the process of transformation begins. So I have to use the words, their sequence, their arrangements, how much gap is needed between the two words to allow a state of relaxation so that my energy, my tawajjo is commune to you. This is known as communication, commune. I am speaking, this is communication and along with that something else is happening, that energy field is working deep within you. The purpose of meditation is a journey from form to formless, from known to unknown, and if it does not happen, then the process of meditation has not begun. In our ordinary life, we continue to use the mind for our day-to-day -day function. As long as we continue to use the mind, we can never know that there is yet another dimension of the mind which is beyond the mind. You have known the dimension of known of the mind, but that which is beyond the mind, the unknown, the unknowable, the formless, you have not known. First the formless comes, the unknown, then through the instruments of perception and action, the unknown, the formless becomes known and it is communicated to you. This meditation leads you to the dimension beyond the known. And this state is the state of meditativeness. Therefore it is that meditation is jump from the mind you use the mind to take a jump into the realm of the unknown. You would have seen the divers. They go on a height, they have to jump in the swimming pool. They use a platform, a sponge-like platform. From there, they take a high jump or whatsoever it is and with the help of that jumping board they go high in the air and then jump into the swimming pool. Mind is that jumping board. If you have known the art you can use the mind because it is the bridge between the known and unknown. Just the direction is different. When you are using the mind to move in the realm of the known, it is outward movement. And the moment the direction is changed, you are moving into the realm of the unknown. That is why meditation is considered as illogical or irrational. It cannot be reduced to any reason. Also, it cannot be made logical. This state can only be experienced. You cannot explain whatsoever is happening deep within you. As these words emanate and reach your ears, it does something to you, something that within you calms down. 
your energies they might be restless they begin to move at a certain wavelength this can only be experienced and when you experience only then you will know what it is do not think about meditation only be a witness to your thoughts to your emotions sit in a comfortable posture be relaxed keep your eyes closed maybe as buddha did he used to keep his eyes half closed half open now allow the thoughts to move on the inner screen like a movie look at them only they are like the horses horses let loose just allow them to disappear in the oblivion in the wilderness do not write them do not think or conceptualize any thought normally we go on conceptualizing the thoughts or give it a form a thought comes to your mind you started giving a form and the moment you do not do anything except witnessing you will be free of those thoughts when you begin to think about these then you will certainly fall into a trap a car passes on the street horns blow thoughts arise emotions flow suddenly a dog barks or something else happens just allow the things to happen you just look at these witness the rise and fall soon these thoughts will disappear as they have come in you did not make any effort for them to come in but when they come you do not want to let them go as they come the same way they will disappear if you do not do anything with them go on looking at the entire process you will notice one thought is replaced by another if you are capable of just looking at these thoughts without any judgment you have certainly attained to the process of witnessing this is the taste of your being witnessing is the taste of your being the light that you are the awareness that you are something different than thinking something more sublime you have to experiment with this although both science and religion are based on experiment religion is experimental as well but philosophy is always non experimental philosophy depends on thinking but the religion and science depend on experiment the only difference between the two is the direction science experiments with the outer world of objects and beings while religion experiments with the inner world or your subjectivity your mind and its connection with the being the light certainly it is difficult in science the experiment the object 
and the experiment are separate from one another. In case of religion, you are the one and three simultaneously. You are the one who is experimenting. You are the experiment because you are experimenting with your innerness, with the thought process as it happens on the inner sky. And you are the lab as well. No thinking, only experimenting. Start the process of experimenting. Only then you will know the difference between witnessing and thinking. You cannot think and witness simultaneously. Just as you cannot run and sit simultaneously, so do. You cannot think and witness simultaneously. You know running is a process, function of the legs, because for running the legs have to come in a movement. One leg moves followed by the other and the continuation of this process at a certain speed is known as running. And in sitting, the two legs become stationary. So too, thinking is a function of the movement of the mind and witnessing is a non-function of the mind where mind is not moving. There is no movement. Thinking is a function of the mind and witnessing is a non-function of the mind. And then the process becomes purely scientific. Following this it can be said that meditation is purely scientific, it does not require any belief, it does not require any scripture, no mantra, no rituals, nothing. Science depends on the observation of objects, so too. When the experimenter begins the inward journey, Again, the same process of observation begins, but there is a difference. Difference is that you have taken a 180 degree turn from outward, you are now inward. You are not going out in the field of objects and beings. Instead, you are coming in your subjectivity, the thought process, listening to this. What kind of thoughts are arising in your mind, only you know. There are different people listening to this live broadcast. As the words emerge and reach your eardrums, they have been received by your subjectivity. These will create a different effect in each one of you. So this is why it is an experience, experiment with within your subjectivity. Now you are looking in this process of observation or looking within, looking into your subjectivity without any judgment is meditation. 
Therefore, for meditation, no God is needed. No scripture and no belief system is needed. Even an atheist can meditate just as a theist. The only thing that is needed is doing within. For meditation, God is not needed, no scripture, and nothing is needed. It is an experiment into your subjectivity, an experiment into the unknown realm of which you are 